Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Game Junk Podcast, episode 165, recording on Sunday, September 17th, 2023. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And when it rains, it pours. We have a Nintendo Direct, a Sony State of Play to go over. And first, we'll just have to address the megaton that happened in the games industry this week. Unity changing their pricing model. Chaos ensued. Uh, Chaos. Were threatening to drop their games. We're not really prepared to talk about, or I'm not anyway, because I thought we were doing these the the two shows. So we might see how the dust settles over the next week or so, and then talk about it. But any initial thoughts or uh, reactions from you guys? Specifically, well, my, my my first my first reaction is just that like indie developers lost their minds basically, and it definitely was somewhat warranted i would say as my i also haven't done like totally run all the numbers and everything but they're definitely for if you just reach the thresholds that they set out it it could be pretty detrimental to your business uh in terms of how much you have to pay them and uh you know the i can't we're trying to find before the show the old pricing model we couldn't find it it's like scrubbed for the internet now um but well, the, the thing unreal. Is, I, I think it might even be like this new thing is on top of the old pricing model. So the old pricing model still oh. exists. Oh, really? And this this install thing is an additional. That's I think that's what it is. Yeah. So they, and they do have like a yearly fee for Unreal. Or sorry, for Unity, which Unreal does not have, and you and Unreal's royalty doesn't kick in until a lot higher than Unity's. So it is pretty detrimental. And, and, you know, a lot of indie studios use Unity uh, and a lot of mobile titles use Unity, which is probably the bigger thing that there's going to be a lot of free to play mobile titles that are now going to be shelling out a lot of extra cash they didn't plan on. So if you're like a mid tier mobile game that has, you know, just crested this income level, you now have to fork over a bunch of money to Unity. So uh, yeah, the internet is ablaze. Uh, Twitter or X or whatever you're calling it now, and Reddit, Reddit especially, Reddit is just on fire with uh, <laughs> with posts about people complaining about this. But I, we were preparing for the show and did look at the article on Unity's blog, and there was a little thing at the top saying, "We've heard you. We're going to address this. We're changing it up." So. I think Frank's right. It's probably not best to really dive into the details of this because it sounds like it's not going to stick around, not even kind of come into effect. But yeah, yeah, uh, it ultimately came down to charging per install uh, rather than like based on revenue, which is a whole nother. Well, what's an install? What about uninstalling and reinstalling and all this stuff? So Mm -hmm. it's just too much speculation. And of course, my cynical brain is going towards like unity had to know people were going to react this way so what's the end game here uh well well the big conspiracy theory around that is like so unity's ceo is john riccatello who is notorious of like sinking ea's stock price because they he just became this big all about the money type guy and now he's at unity seemingly doing the same thing so all the ea haters in the world are coming out in full force to just shit all over unity now and shit all over him so and, and apparently he it's also been a sea change even in indie towards unreal yes so, especially since know, unreal 5 dropped yeah so i mean there's just too much and, and if we get a topic for next week we can do a whole show on this i'm sure and and apparently there was like some i don't know if it was a hot mic or something and john riccatello called like all the people complaining fucking idiots so that didn't help things, <laughs> you know. Like, know that. <laughs> it runs deep. It runs deep. Yeah. So there's unity against unity. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Again, the details are going to be difficult to sift through, and, and we'll have to wait on that. I think. But you know, it's just interesting. We were talking about how much unity seems to be losing favor. And this is just pushing people even further. But obviously the problem is there's people that are locked in already. This affects games that are already on storefronts. Yeah, that's the weirdest like, part. I, I remember hearing numbers of if we leave it on the, like how much they'd have to pay for 
certain things, games that have sold millions of copies. This cannot make sense. And it feels like if anything, they announce stuff without really thinking it through, which seems even dumber. Like, how could you not think these things through? If these are the first questions, even we have reacting to a news story, you're the company putting the news story. I figured you would, uh, you know, have PR teams or whatever, (laughs) figuring out all these things. So, uh, that's why I'm like, something is not right here. Something is up. The the only thing that I can think is they're, they're desperate for cash in some way. Like not just like from a greed standpoint, like maybe the company's in trouble. Like obviously they have to compete with, uh, unreal. Who's got, they've got Fortnite money, which is basically unlimited. Like uh, maybe that's starting to affect them in some way. I mean, clearly it is, but I don't know. There were already some shifts within unity in terms of the last, we're not going there. I'm stop. We're done stopping it right now. (laughs) possibly pick it up in a week's time for now we're moving on to nintendo direct the real news of the week for gamers not game developers and uh this was a kind of a surprise nintendo direct they usually are uh there's not a lot of advance notice and then we also right after that sony announced their state of play so we're going to talk about them in that order we are not going to talk about every game announced. I don't think we'll have time. We will give letter grades though. So I will start with Nintendo and say, I am going to go in order to start because the first thing was Splatoon 3 expansion pass that's coming out in 2024, I think. And it was the strangest opening to one. It, well, actually both streams had very strange openings uh it's like this cold open into splatoon 3 single player stuff and no intro no speech just kind of ambient music and repetitive imagery and i'm like yeah no no over dub yeah or an introduction there was no introduction it went right into just ambient music and splatoon and i mean that pretty much sums up nintendo uh i I did not buy Splatoon 3. I'm intrigued by the idea of single player and they were focusing on replay it it, like forever type of stuff. I don't know what that means. If they're leaning into roguelike, roguelite type stuff, that would actually be pretty cool for Splatoon, I think. So uh, don't really care. Just wanted to comment on how weird it was. Do you guys uh, care about Splatoon 3 expansion? No, not really. I mean... I guess I'm a little more interested in the single player than the multiplayer, but I haven't, uh, I haven't played any of Splatoon three yet. All it right. was so, so weird that as soon as I saw that it was Splatoon three, I just skipped the whole section and didn't even watch any of it. So <laughs> that's how much I was interested in it. There you go. Uh, so the, let's talk about the biggest thing was paper Mario thousand year door remaster like a, a pretty pretty big overhaul i'd say uh slated for 2024 i believe right i think so yeah and i guess i underestimated how big of a game this is uh, like i've talked to a lot of people who love this game and this was the biggest announcement and there's a reason why they saved it for last uh and it's getting a pretty positive reaction out there. Huck, I think that you like this game, don't you? I've actually never played this one. I think this was the one that was originally on GameCube. Correct. And this, I believe, is the de facto best Paper Mario game of all of them. And I do, I have played Paper Mario, but I actually don't really enjoy Paper Mario. It, there's just so much dialogue in these games that I get turned off every time. And you know, if I was playing a game for 40 hours, okay. But if I'm just reading dialogue for 35 of those 40 hours, I don't really enjoy it that much. And the dialogue you're going through is not enjoyable. It's like blabber on bullshit. Um, I mean, I guess that's like, I mean, you obviously love final fantasy. Yes. dialogue there but i mean the thing i do like about the mario ones is they do have a sense of humor Um, that's what i was gonna say 100 percent. i actually like that dialogue more than final fantasy dialogue i can't i think i actually played and beat that game although when i was watching the footage it's like i don't remember 
any of this. This game is a blur, uh, but I'm kind of excited to give that franchise another chance and to start with uh, a hopefully quality of life filled version of a classic is, is a good place. I'd say. Yeah, I played uh, this game a bit and I think I remember lending this game to somebody and I don't think I ever got it back. I feel like I don't have it in my um, crawl space. So, uh, so, Hey, I'm, I'm game to, to give it another shot, but. I mean, I played a fair bit of the last Paper Mario game and it was pretty good. But yeah, I think this one seems like everyone loves it. So I'll give it a shot. Although, let's be honest, the the theme of this Nintendo Direct, as with many recent Nintendo Directs, is tons of remakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, the only positive I take out of that... uh Aside from the fact that I generally like remakes, uh, I enjoy playing them if they're good games, but they must be whatever the next version of the Switch is, it will be fully backwards compatible. Is the only, it seems like they're building a Nintendo library of every great game they've ever made over time with kind of definitive remasters or good versions. So at some point, every great Nintendo game I think will be available on a Nintendo system. I think that would be the internal goal. It would be my internal goal if I ran Nintendo. Yeah. It's interesting though, because, you know, people have been asking for certain things on virtual console for a long time. And I think Nintendo has realized better to fully remake and resell this game back to people than just throw it on virtual console. So it's kind of what we're seeing happening, but, also interesting, like there was a lot of people thinking there might be the the Switch Two announced at this direct, um, but you know people are thinking it's coming out early next year. So I don't know when they would announce it if that's the case. Sean, do you know if your Paper Mario Thousand Year Door was a Selects or Nintendo Classics version, or was it the original? I think it was the original because I bought it when it came out. It's going for upwards. One hundred and fifty dollars for a complete version and stuff like that. Oh, so man. You might have to track that person down. I got one back here, and it's not yours. <laughs> he had parted <laughs> ways after the movie that. review show during that time. So, sorry, guy. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, the second biggest thing is probably Princess Peach Showtime. Do we agree on that? Sure. Yes. You got teased as just the peach game a while back uh and so this has an official title and really wasn't clear what this game was last time they showed it uh now it seems like it's almost a replacement skew or something like that for uh the yoshi game or sorry the the kirby or yoshi platformers the very casual uh kind of kid-friendly uh platformers that nintendo makes when they first started showing this game, I thought it was like, is this a game for infants? It looked so simple, the gameplay. I'm like, I don't know about this. But as they kept showing all the different versions of Peach, like the, I can't remember all the names, but Kung Fu Peach, Detective Peach. You guys were probably losing it for Detective Peach. <laughs> uh, Definitely. The Sword Fighter. I, I actually thought there was a lot of polish and intrigue uh, in the game. And it kind of reminded me of a game I totally forgot about was it called the puppeteer it was like a plot sense yeah right or, PS- or, just, or just puppeteer uh yeah uh, yeah like it, was it was like a, a ps3 game. launch-ish yeah. window game somewhere in there two and a half d platformer where the scenes changing and um i i th- actually thought it looked quite good if the if this the combat in each of those different versions of peach has a compelling hook or is fun. Like most Nintendo games or so pardon me, Mario games tend to do that. A version of power ups in Mario. Uh, I'm in. What about you guys? Uh, I I'm a little confused. I wasn't sure if like, is it just like a straightforward platformer with like these different roles being kind of like abilities or powers within that? Or are these like separate mini games? That's like, you go into detective mode. Now you have like a little detective mini game and, like I wasn't quite sure if all the stuff is separated out like that or what. Yeah, that's a good point. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was almost like switching genres at times from action to adventure. And 
Uh, it, there might be more going on, which in my opinion would be a more interesting game. I think if they do something like creative with that. Yeah. I, I definitely read it as but... mini games. I read it as mini games okay, as well. All right. I missed that then. Okay. Yeah. Cause there was rhythm stuff too. Right. I think at one point in it. Yeah, I think so. So I like games that mix genre, uh, like near automata and do interesting stuff with that. So that actually has me more excited. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it, actually, uh, now that we actually have some information of what it is. And it kind of, I, I don't know, I like when they take uh, you know, a character they have and just kind of throw it in such a weird direction. Kind of like with uh, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. Like, why would you think to do that? And it works, you know? So I, I think, you know, I, Nintendo wouldn't just put this out if it wasn't fun and didn't work. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a pretty ex, a pretty good game, regardless of what it is. You know. Yeah. The, the oh, I blanked. Damn it! I had a good. <laughs> I'm losing it, dudes. Forget it. It's over. We're done. Yep. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Letter grade time. <laughs> No, not quite there yet. Uh, probably should. The, I think the next one would be Mario versus Donkey Kong. The I don't know if it's DS or 3DS. There was a, a few of these. Kind of a puzzle game. With uh, did you guys play this? Yeah. This, oh, this this was this an existing the, game. Yeah, I think this is the Game Boy Advance getting a remake. But like the series started, if I remember correctly, there was a game just called Donkey Kong on Game Boy. And it started this sort of puzzle platformer thing, even though you set, it sounds like it would just be like a straight up remake of the arcade game. It's not. And then I think this was the next one. And then I think from there on, they were all called Mario versus Donkey Kong something. Uh, but I, I did like this game quite a bit. So I'm interested, but again, it's a remake, always a little bit, feels a little bit uh underwhelming when i'm you know would be maybe more excited about a new mario versus dk game same with uh the peach game nintendo stuff looked super polished like a lot of variety uh and they kind of touting what almost looked like pillars of the game like observation in action and and then they showed an example of noticing a tail that you grab and all this stuff and uh it was I like kind of deliberate gameplay trailers like that. So I don't think I'm, well, I know I'm not that excited for this game, but it looked okay. If you're into the series or puzzle games, I would say. Yeah. I'd never heard of this game, but I found it pretty interesting. Actually, definitely a uh, library rental for me. Oh yeah. And that's coming out February 16th next year. Okay. I might, uh, go a little editorial here and say what I think the next biggest thing was and might've even put it higher if it was up to me. Oh no, sorry. There's a bigger one. Unicorn overlord for Huck and maybe Sean a bit. The new Vanillaware game debuted. I almost forgot about this and uh, it, so what, what was the tagline? I wrote it. Oh, the rebirth of tactical fantasy RPGs. Like I read this line and Huck is going to be <laughs> orgasmic over this. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I thought we were talking about this last week, how, you know, uh, tactics ogre reborn and final fantasy tactics came out. And like, I just don't have the patience for these games anymore. So I'm like, not excited at all for this game. Like, when I saw it, I thought it looked good. And, you know, Vanillaware, I like uh, I like the concept of a tactics game, but I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence. I will, I will definitely keep my eye on it with with interest, but I, I I just don't have the motivation and and time for these games anymore. So uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be on my top list of for myself. Vanillaware is the developer where their art style so unique. I buy all their games and not once have I been hooked by one. And I always want to be, I want this one to be the one where I, I fall in love with this developer and it never happens. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking I think at the other one was own sphere. I think was the only one I really liked. That one was, yeah, that was the closest one. And there was the, was it dragon's crown, the beat em up. Yeah. RPG? yeah. I never really got into that one. 
I was going to say, I've played Dragon's Crown and I've played a little bit of Muramasa, the Demon Blade, but yep. um, I'm not, it's it's kind of like their list of games is a weird bunch of different genres. And then I guess their most recent one was that 13 Sentinels uh, game, which got really good reviews. I think it's just on PlayStation Plus this month now. Oh yeah, I like played a that a bit. bit. Curious, but I really should just play their games because every one of their games gets like a nine or a nine point five or a ten, and someone's got to tear this down. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has to do the actual playing of these games and confirming, or more likely, denying these uh, review scores. But either way, it's time. it's time, Frank. Unicorn Overlord. What a good name for a game like that. <laughs> I. We'll buy it just because of that name. I'll tell you that right now. I love the name. Okay. Uh, so the one I was going to talk about that I was probably the most excited about every, uh, all the announcements, F-099. I love Nintendo's like uh, old school Battle Royale games, Mario 35. I still play Pac-Man 99, uh, Tetris 99 how they've kind of taken classic games and turned them into battle royales, I think is very uh, cool. And I was just in a mood for F zero. So I was just praying, please drop today. Please drop today. As I was watching it, I said available today. So I downloaded it, fired it up and it's got quite a bit of a learning curve for a uh, battle royale like this. And you have to do a lot of training before they've even let you go into a match, uh, which was well done, but it, to me, it didn't have quite the satisfaction of uh, Pac-Man 99 or some other ones because you, it, no matter what, it's four laps. So, like, there's not this el- the eliminate sense of elimination is not the same as other ones where you could be the last person standing. You still have to be really, uh, like, really proactive and very skilled. It's not about just surviving. So I did, I mean, the music's the best. I love the aesthetic of F-Zero. Uh, Sean, are you an F-Zero fan? I feel like you would be. I mean, I've played it. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan, but uh, this trailer looked really cool. Uh, so I, I do want to check it out. I just, I you didn't download it yet? Nope, not yet. <laughs> what? Dude, Draws all I'm shot. playing is Starfield. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, fair enough. This guy's in. Uh, but my one criticism, and it, like it really gets me going, the HUD is like slick uh, graphic design, graphics, not pixel based mm. um, artistry to match the F zero aesthetic and just rubs me wrong. Don't like it. Sean, what do you say? Am I right? I mean, I'd have to see it, but I, yeah, I probably agree that that would look weird. I'm sure it'll grow on me. Okay, I'm still going from uh, my perspective as well. And the other thing, I have a few things to talk about. Tomb Raider remaster or one, two, and three remastered. This was kind of a surprise. It's the original trilogy with still like nostalgic graphics, but slightly better textures and uh, visuals. And you can still play in the original graphical style. Which leads me to my big question. Have either of you tried to go back and play Tomb Raider 1 for PlayStation at any point? Mm, I don't think so. Was there an Xbox like 360 collection thing? Because I think I had that. Yeah, I, I think it was called like think 25th I... anniversary or something like that. Yeah, yeah they, and... they reimagined it with the like 360 era controls and uh, the levels were not like exactly the same it was just in the spirit or the same general flow and levels of the original okay yeah i I don't even remember putting it in so (laughs) but i never played any of the original tomb raider games i never had a playstation back then so i kind of do want to go back and play these so if this is the best way to check them out i mean i'm kind of interested yeah Yeah, and for me i haven't I haven't gone back and tried them, but I remember them being extremely janky and frustrating uh, yeah. when I played them originally. So, to like move around, it was always these weird kind of side steps, like ever, and you had to rotate your whole body and then be very precise and meticulous with your jumps. Like, are you pressing just jump 
or forward and jump and all this stuff. And it was almost like jumping puzzles, which in today's day and age, last time I tried it was a nightmare, like golden eye <laughs> level nightmare playing that on Nintendo 64 again. So I'm just curious to see what the updated controls are the same way. Like they got rid of tank controls and resident evil remakes and stuff like that. So if they found a way to, uh, simplify or make those controls intuitive for modern audiences. I'm actually really excited to play these games again. I'll probably just play for two hours, but I'm still excited for that two hours. Okay. I don't, do you guys have anything that you, there's one other, there's one other big remake that we haven't talked about, which is Luigi's mansion Two HD, but (laughs) okay. You know what I'm going to say, right? No. How do you start at two? <laughs> well, yeah. You have to, already... like, can we just get one first? I, and yeah. Let's go I know the whole series. You were asking for one at some point, I remember. But the thing is, they already remade one for the 3DS. Right. But <laughs> so two it's... was for the 3DS as well. So and I would assume they're, bringing it back the other way. they're yeah. using the same tech to HD scale it up. So why wouldn't you start at one? Or like they did with Pikmin, do one and two, bundle it together. Uh, so yet yeah. again, I'm going to have to play one again or start it and not finish it again <laughs> to reconfirm Luigi's Mansion sucks, despite how much I love the <laughs> art uh, and the vibe. It just is not fun to play. So yeah, this one is a bit of a... That's it. I've never played a Luigi's Mansion game, so I was kind of intrigued by this announcement, but... Um... Yeah, I've never been drawn to it, to be honest, that much to try it out. So I'm not sure if I'll stick with it. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm hearing mixed reviews from the crowd here. Yeah, I mean, I, I like three. I mean, I haven't played that much, but like, obviously, that was a fun one to play co-op because they added co-op. So with the kids, that was fun. And I have played a bit of two. I don't think I've ever played the first one. Okay, let's cover a couple other Nintendo games. You guys might be intrigued by Detective Pikachu Returns. Uh, It was establishing some of the detective mechanics in the game where you can use different Pokemon to like see through walls and look for clues. Any movement on the needle on this one, gentlemen? Not really. Not much. No. No? I think you'll give it a library spin but (laughs) well of course but we'll see how it goes the other nintendo game the only other one i can i think is uh warioware move it Mm -hmm. john this is uh you're the warioware guy you're into like random crazy shit so i love random crazy shit uh but yeah i mean i'm looking forward to it we'll definitely pick it up i mean not really too much you're guaranteeing you're buying this game right now this one I will guarantee I'm buying. Nice. Did you buy one two switch or its sequel? I do have one two switch. I, I mean, I think actually Kieran bought it with a gift card he had or something. So it wasn't my it's not my purchase, but I haven't bought the new one. Okay. So now we're getting into just kind of the smaller bizarre stuff that is part of every Nintendo Direct. Uh the one I had the most questions about that I thought. Huck might have the answers was the another code recollection collection about another code to memories and another code R that I know nothing about, but neither do I. Okay. (laughs) Anyone know anything about this franchise? (laughs) No, never Never heard of it. it. Okay. All right. (laughs) Then uh, I, I remember there being some interesting mini game stuff and it actually intrigued me more than i thought it would so i thought one of you was going to convince me these are like very famous games and you would have played it or heard about <laughs> it but nope it's still a mystery uh <laughs> yeah. and uh what's the ayuden chronicles 100 heroes yeah the like sudoku uh, not sudoku uh <laughs> sukaden sukaden looking game yeah made by the I've same looked- developers because like i i realized oh that that's exactly what this is going for i don't think so i mean maybe some of them worked on the original but i i remember this game has been kind of 
worked on for a while now. And then they also released that other game that I played for a bit. Um, but it was more, it was not the same. It was a different style of game. It was more like a 2D side scrolling game, action kind of platforming game. The but, developer uh, only has one. This is the only game they have listed on Steam. So, oh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was called like a, a whatever, a Ludian Tales Rising or something like that. Yeah, it might and have it was, been a different team that got renamed. Maybe. Or something. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. This one's okay. Red and Bear Studios. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it's it's intriguing, uh, and I know that the didn't uh, whoever whoever made uh, God, Sudik, I'm trying. <laughs> I, I I'm blanking on the name. My brain is is mush right now. Uh, Sukadin uh, didn't uh, didn't they announce a re- an HD remake of one and two coming out? I don't know who made it. Capcom I thought it was or- two or three. It was originally Konami. Konami. Um, right. There was a, a a remake of one of those at some point, but I thought this actually looked really good. I mean, yeah, it has looked good. Probably one of those games. So they've been. It, I think this game has been announced for quite a while, though. So I think this is just getting it back into the consciousness. Yeah, I, I've. Pardon me. I definitely heard about it before. Um, some other small stuff. Horizon Chase Two launched that day i really like the first horizon chase but only on switch for now uh it's not listed on steam yet the trombone champ also coming to the Mm -hmm. switch did you ever play that sean i did not still on my wish list (laughs) really i thought i thought you played for sure they showed different control schemes one was like holding two uh joy cons like like this with the ir sensor and i couldn't believe there wasn't like a (laughs) a trombone one where you actually like move them yeah that's true like the most obvious thing to do if you have (laughs) ir pointer and motion controls it was weird how they demonstrated it but i never played i do have it i've never played it um on steam the only other david diver yeah but that was just like the console launch announcement. Did they give mm-hmm. a date? Uh, I don't, I think they did, but I don't remember when it was. I feel like it was like October or something. A lot of time dedicated to a new map in Among Us, which is yeah. very strange. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't I get not it. heard of anyone still playing that game. <laughs> um, yeah, there was two other little things that I noticed or that I were of interest to me. One was Wargroove 2, which um, yep. I, played, I played a bit of the first one. This is basically kind of like Advanced Wars. Um, and they, they said this is a console exclusive. I just checked. It looks mm-hmm. like it is coming to Steam at the same time, but it looks like just Steam and Switch to start. Yeah, um, I found that interesting too. Place. And then, yeah, I would call it more like, I mean, I guess it's all the same, but Fire Emblem is probably closer, yeah, I, mean, I think, but yeah, it's similar in terms of theme and, and stuff like that, for sure. But um, the other thing, uh, there's a Contra remake. Mm-hmm. Is that the Contra, original Contra that it's a remake of? I think so. Contra Operation Galuga is what it's called. And I don't, I, I, I think they, they're, they're adding like four player co-op, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, it looks like pure chaos, but it could be fun. Yeah, that looked pretty good. So that came in between of some other announcements like Battle Crush and War Tales. And then there was a similar thing later with uh, the, I think it's League of Legends spinoff games, the right, yeah. Song of Nunu and uh, Bandle Tale. Which both of those lo- looked okay. I thought they were uh, had some interesting art styles, but this is the first time. Maybe the opening night live tweaked me for this. This felt like payola. Like it, this <laughs> felt like Nintendo taking money to kind of insert some games. That the tone kind of shifted ever so slightly to being introduced in a just something was a little different about how they announced these games in succession, and I'm wondering if. I've just Nintendo is really good at hiding and because they put so much random stuff in their Nintendo directs, you can't even tell when it's payola. Like it's literally (laughs) genius. Well, like, is it payola (laughs) or is it that they want to show people that, Hey, like 
they want to bring League of Legends people over to the Switch. Like, I mean, that's worth featuring, I would think. I agree, but I mean, I didn't know that it was League of Legends until the very end, and they they mentioned it. So obviously, League players would. But I don't know. There was just something. Something was off, and I'm finally convinced. I don't know why I didn't just assume people are paying to get in this Nintendo Direct, but I think there are about four or five games that paid to be in it. Um, but uh, the other one was this Huck. I don't know this franchise, Saga Emerald Beyond. I thought it looked absolutely horrible. Yeah, I don't have anything written down. I don't even remember what it look, looked like, but the Saga Frontier games were big on PlayStation. I never really liked them. I don't even know if I really played them for that long, but I think I think they're very big in Japan. Okay. Like, I don't, like super I don't think unpolished. Like the character would go around and go into water, and like the transition into the water was very janky. And I was really surprised by how unpolished that game looked in a Nintendo uh, Direct. Uh, what about this Spy Anya Operation Memories game? Anyone heard of this? Is this a series or? I have no idea. <laughs> Do not Never know. heard of Actually, it. Actually, it might be kind of that the font kind of is triggering something in my mind. It might be tied. There's an anime series called Spy Family. It might be related to that, but I, I honestly don't know. Okay. Uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown, also coming to Switch. We'd seen that game before. Super Crazy Rhythm Castle, which is a, that might have been Paola, a Konami rhythm game, I think. Did have mm-hmm. some, some some bangers in there though. I don't know. It might be worth it. At least there was variety in the rhythm mini games compared to some other like kind of lazy rhythm games. But definitely not buying it. Uh, and last, I'll just mention the Nintendo Museum is being built. The official mm-hmm. Nintendo yeah. Museum. I was really hoping they'd say we're building one in the U.S. as well, but it seems like it's only in Japan, Kyoto, I think, right? I believe so. Looked cool. Uh, okay, that's all I have for Nintendo. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, well, we didn't mention Super Mario RPG. You know, I already knew that was coming out. There was a new trailer for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it featured the triple attack for experimenting with parties of three. Was that in the original game? Or is that because they said there's I a new I don't think feature. so. That seemed like yeah. something that was new. I think it. I think it is. I don't recall that happening. Almost like the Chrono Trigger triple attack kind of thing. I, I think that is new because so. that feels like something you could add to the game and have like some meter for building it up, and it wouldn't interfere with the combat too much. Like it, it you mm-hmm. wouldn't like completely mess with the economies of the game by throwing that in. But uh, yeah, looks all right. I'm still pumped for that game, to be honest. Okay, time. the time has come for a letter grade. I actually didn't think it was that bad. I'm kind of like C plus, B minus. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go B minus. I was thinking C plus. I mean, it's a lot of remakes, but hey, there was new announcements, things I'm looking forward to. It, it was okay. Yep, C plus for me too. Also, okay. For me, the B minus is even like that. Uh, what was it another code or whatever it was called? Some of these games that I've never heard of and don't mean anything to me actually looked intriguing at points. So uh, they kind of won me over on games I never thought I'd be interested in. So got to give them the B minus. All right, now moving on to the Blue Haze, the Sony State of Play, September fourteenth, twenty twenty three. Also starting off in a very peculiar way uh, within three seconds, Mm -hmm. I was about, okay, this is whoever made Quop. Bennett Foddy. Yeah. Bennett Foddy. And uh, I I never, I just got reminded of that uh, getting over it game. That's the same guy. That's also, I know, I know, I know. I just forgot about that game. So it all kind of uh, made sense. That being said, it's kind of this idea of, Like it's called baby steps where you are deciding where to put your foot. It looks like, and some puzzle mechanics as to how to get up hills. And I know part of these games is it's an exercise in humor and frustration, but I thought it was definitely, 
Go definitely ahead, favorites of streamers. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of interested. Uh, this has been announced somewhere before. I don't remember where we saw oh, really? it last, but uh, like, is it a Devolver game or something? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, but yeah, I'm kind of interested. I, I was, I, I was just gonna say, I was a little shocked by the language like right away they started like dropping f-bombs like <laughs> as like the first show in like in a sony thing like is this really the well one it seems like a weird way to p- possibly introduce your game to a lot of people and it's the first get like show like first game shown in this state of play yeah. seems like a very strange choice to be dropping the f-bombs like that and it's like it's like at someone it's not just like oh fuck i like i fell over it's like you're a fucker i hate you I'm like whoa what's going on here that grapple that fucker i have a, a a note here or something like that and it's yeah it's like trying to be like blast processing in the 90s like the super cool edgy console this Definitely feels trying like to go viral this is a bad idea uh yeah and, i was shocked and i would say this kind of theme for me carries through like appealing to to teenagers or whatever it's i don't know it's it's a thing in games that always has been but when it's part of the showcases and leaning into that i really it it leaves a bad taste in my mouth you know yeah i'm becoming an old man what do you want that's that's the way it goes totally for (laughs) hey for me i was thinking like kids are going to be watching this. Like, how can you lead with this stuff? And like, it's Sony, you're supposed to have a little more gravitas to your shows. Like I know obviously showing last of us and people getting their heads smashed in is probably worse than saying fuckers, yes. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but I mean, come on. It's, it's just, it was pretty shocking that they opened it with that right off the, the get go. And, and, you know, their big game they're showing is Spider-Man two at this one. And, you know, there's so there's no, cursing at all in spider-man 2 it's like a straight arrow game so it's it's quite a contrast i think well even the contrast of the next announcement which was roblox right yeah hey is, kids <laughs> for kids now that you've watched uh, baby steps <laughs> uh roblox coming to playstation october 10th which i'm sure huge. a lot of people will be happy about and it is huge and i could not care less about <laughs> yeah i actually played some roblox this weekend you in I'm not in. My kids kind of asked me to. I was like, all right. I was like, oh my God, I can't handle this. <laughs> Everything I've ever seen with it is awful. I have absolutely, it's like, why would I want to play bad games? <laughs> yeah. What is I mean, the there's, there, there's a little bit of humor to it, but like after five minutes, you're just like, okay, I'm done. I, I've been thinking a lot about uh, how all these games are pushing towards content generation and showing off what you made. And is it just going to lead to like lowering the bar for what is a good game? Because no one, uh, so when you play like a half decent game, it's going to be so much better than what you played in Roblox that it's going to stand out. And like, you're going to think, oh, this is really good when there's even better stuff out there. This, this whole uh, content boom with user created stuff might destroy video games is, is, uh, (laughs) is my initial hot take i'm isn't so my thing is i would think this is almost all of this user generated content stuff is purely like what sean was talking about with the humor it's all for streamers picking up random stuff streaming it making money that way kids watching it well i, don't I mean know. they're I, making tons of money though right because you, you the, the users are creating the content for you and they're keeping it evergreen but how do they make their money how does roblox make its money uh that's a good question actually i mean they you can buy cosmetics i i think that's the main way they make money um Hmm. i don't know if there's anything else i mean there's a lot of like sponsored games starting to pop up uh which is another weird thing Hmm. but uh yeah anyway as far as i'm concerned bad news Roblox coming to VR too. I believe it's coming oh, really? to the Quest soon, if it's not already. Didn't know that. Not P- did they say PSVR too? Was that part of this? I don't remember. I didn't see that in this press conference. No. Okay. Next up, uh, 
Sean, I might need your help with the full title on this one. I just have Ghostbusters written down. So, Rise of the Ghost Lord. Okay. Uh, I, the first time I watched this trailer, it looked really bad to me. Today I watched it and I didn't think it was as bad. There, there was some, uh, some cool art style stuff. The weirdest thing to me would we'll say RE4 VR also got announced after this one. This trend in VR trailers, I don't know what this is, where you have to show the hands being jittery and feel like someone's actually playing it. I mean, it's going to be jittery and annoying when I play it. Can I at least watch the trailer as if it's an ideal world where things are smooth <laughs> and uh, someone's playing it perfectly? I don't need to simulate VR annoyances in the trailers. And I was wondering if you guys had any insights as to like, do people complain about this or was there a controversy with the game saying this was it, this isn't what it's like to play it. Like, I don't understand it. I mean, I haven't really thought about it. I just assumed they're capturing actual gameplay and that's in the trailer, but it's a fair point. <laughs> Let's make that trailer look as good as it can. The ideal experience. Yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're under the visor, you don't notice it. You're too worried about you know what you're looking at, not what your hands are doing. But when you're watching trailers, let's smooth that out a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it looked okay. RE4 VR. Uh, did they say it's next year the expansion's coming? Sometime 2024 for mm -hmm. VR specifically, not the DLC or the separate ways mission. I don't recall what the date was. Let's see if I can find I it. I think they said coming sometime in uh, 2024. They also announced new DLC at the same time for uh, Resident Evil 4 called Separate Ways featuring Ada Wong, uh, and it's arriving September 21st. And I, I, was it just me or was the voice acting like in almost everything in the showcase pretty bad? Even Final Fantasy, yeah, I, mean, I thought I was like, this, is this voice acting always this bad? Well, I mean, with both Resident Evil and Final Fantasy, I'm never sure if it's like an homage to how things used to be. Like, I really don't know. But yeah, I I, I know what you mean. Uh, it looks like the VR mode is free DLC coming this winter, is what they said. Okay. Winter. Who knows? That's a long period. I th mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be out before Christmas. Would be my guess. Uh, next, Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. Last time we saw it, there was some potential, little, a uh, little bit to be desired. Technically, I think this time I'm about the same, a, a bit better, but I'm still not a hundred percent sold on this first person avatar game uh it's it, it cuts pretty well with a trailer but when i'm in there playing it I, I could see it going either way are you guys more or less excited based on the state of play i i think i'm in the same boat you are i'm i was not swayed one way or the other after watching this trailer i thought it was fine i thought it could be fun but um it also definitely just looks like a Far Cry type game. So yeah, it's, I, it's hard I to tell. I could see it being like a anywhere from a five to a nine in review scores. Yeah. 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 Like when this was first announced, the thing in my head was like, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. But now having seen more of the trailers and stuff, I'm definitely feeling more of a Far Cry vibe, which is not necessarily bad, but, you know, it, it, it's not, I don't know. Yeah. I could, the first person thing is weird. And like I've said before, it reminds me of Far Cry Primal, which I actually really liked. So uh, I am cautiously optimistic for the game. One thing I'll note, I have it on my wish list on PlayStation. It's listed as $90 right now, and it's not a deluxe edition. Is this a new thing where games are going up another $10? Oh, could be. Why is it this game that's going up $10? Yeah, I don't know. Like... It I think Diablo was 90, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's been a few. Well, I think, uh, was Tears of the Kingdom 90? I think so. So, like, it, they seem to be picking and choosing. But, yeah, this one, I'm not sure why this one specifically would be. 
all the avatar nuts out there, you know, they got to <laughs> so. buy it no matter what. That's really who's going to buy this game. So you got to get that money. Yep. Uh, next was Ghost Runner 2. And I kind of thought it looked a little worse than what I remember from Ghost Runner 1 uh, in terms of environment. I, I didn't play much of Ghost Runner. Uh, this one felt more like fut- even more cyberpunky. And I don't know. I wasn't that into it. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I've even played the first one. It's kind of been on my list of stuff I wanted to check out. And uh, and now this one, there's a demo for it, and I haven't downloaded it. So I really do want to check one of these out. It seems like it could be kind of something I'd be into, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just not it's not fully uh, pulling me in. Yeah, I don't I don't really like super fast paced first person games. Uh, so like this, even like Doom, I I found. I don't know. Maybe just because now, like original Doom, I could handle because it's really like the background is there and then the enemies. But now with current gen stuff and everything happening all over the place, I have a hard time even knowing where you're supposed to go in these games and like where I'm supposed to jump to and who I'm supposed to hit. Um, so it's not really for me, I don't think. And I don't really, I don't think I ever tried the original Ghost Runner either. So I have no real you know, opinion on if I'm going to like this game at all. So I'm right now. I'm also checked out on this one. I should try it. Like, I mean, to me, the bar, uh, when you're talking about where you're supposed to go, uh, like navigating an environment quickly from a first person perspective. I mean, I would just think of neon white neon white was so like clear where you had to go, what you, where you could jump, what you should be interacting with. Uh, like, and it had a, like, very uh contrasty art style with like black outlines on everything and they, they played around with that so it seems like this is a lot harder to do it, it they might pull it off but uh even mirror's edge they did some interesting stuff with uh color and shape language with red items and that didn't stand out to me watching this trailer but it might be something you learn as you play a bit more Okay, uh, new controllers, red, white, and silver. Are these all metallic, I guess, like a, and, and covers for the PlayStation? Yeah, I was like, I thought these colors were already out, but I guess they're slightly different. The one looks like white. I think it's more silver, and who knows? Do I have to buy every DualSense <laughs> controller? Probably. Yes, you do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they know who they're getting money from on these things, guys like me. Oh, yeah. Um, but there is something that metallic substance or sorry, the metallic substance that, that finish, like I could see it being really smooth, which I don't know if I like that. Like I like the kind of, uh, texture of the standard plastic on the controller. So, you know what? I might not buy these. How about that? (laughs) And if I do, I'll wait till they're on sale or clearance at shoppers drug mart. Next up, Helldivers 2. The original Helldivers was kind of top-down, isometric art style. This one is switching to a co-op uh, third-person third person. game. And this was the strangest uh, part of the show for me by far. This kind of scripted uh, people hanging out, playing the game together, which... I mean, I know what I talk like when I play video games. It doesn't sound like this. And I can also imagine what I might say, like what when I would play a game, if you just show me a trailer, like yeah, I know where were the F- I know how to talk. Uh, <laughs> where were the F-bombs during this section? That's what real gameplay is like. <laughs> exactly. Like that, it, it's not even representative of real gameplay. And to me, the the reason to do this would be to show you how uh innovative the co-op gameplay is like tell remember when we saw the first sea of thieves trailer and someone was holding the map and that's all they could see with their camera and it was about communicating and doing something and we were intrigued by the same ideas in um what was the left for dead back for blood 
it, it, like and then uh, someone got locked and you had to help them and it was emphasizing co-op interaction. There was nothing about what they were doing while they were talking that screamed to me, oh, this is really cool. This is a cool idea for two people working together. There, there was one element I'm struggling to remember. But other than that, I was like, this seems like a pretty standard co-op third person action game. It looks okay. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I'm, I might check it out, but just a strange choice to present it. Oh yeah. Big time. I am not a fan of this mimicking gameplay with obvious, like, like people that work at the studio trying to act like they're having fun. Uh, like even at the end, like, well done guys. Super. We did so great. Look, look, we're awesome. Like, come on. I think there was Why would you throw that in? Trailer. One of the first Anthem things was similar to that too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Than whether, that. whether they're doing it live on stage during like E3 or something or kind of, you know, whatever this was, like it never feels, it always feels awkward and, and yeah, it's not natural at all. Yeah. You know. And and like, I don't know, it kind of looks like a Starship Troopers game to me, which has me intrigued, but just I don't know why they would. It's vibe too. Yeah, yeah I was gonna sure. say. Which, I mean, I I do like that. I don't hate the design of the enemies. I think it it could be cool, and I love my Sony third person action games. Uh, <laughs> and if they do co op well, I mean, I I would love to play a game co op when they're good. You, I finish them. Whether it's uh, it takes two, Resident Evil Five, Gears of War. It's just there are not that many great co-op games to play the entire way through. So uh, I don't know if this is more mission based or if it's like a campaign, but well, I'm in the vibe was, is more mission based. That was kind of my question. Like I didn't even like I know this game has been shown before and stuff, but like is there just a single player campaign as well, or is it just a multiplayer game? I'm not sure. Yeah, I would say it's still pretty unclear. It looks like kind of a double A mid tier kind of game, which I don't think is going to serve it well. Uh, but I'll still check it out at some point. And it reminded me, I should go back and play uh, Hell Divers One, which I always thought looked pretty good. Okay, next, probably the biggest game of the show, although we'd heard about it before and seen it, uh, Marvel's Spider Man Two, coming out October twentieth. Uh the big thing I would say was this instantaneous switching of characters uh, using the loading times of the PS5 and some of the fast travel stuff they showed, which we've seen in stuff like, um, oh, why can't I think of it? The Sucker Punch game, Japanese. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima, yeah. Like how fast, like they have really good tech solutions for fast travel and loading. Um, so I'm not surprised by any of that stuff, but I think the idea of s switching characters is pretty cool for they've established two leads and now they're both going to be part of the story, which as we've mentioned is the new trend in AAA games, multiple characters with unique gameplay that are all part of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, I, they had mentioned this before, but it was kind of interesting to see how it actually works. And, uh, yeah, I think that could be a cool element of the game for sure it seemed like it was also borrowing from ghost of tsushima with the idea of things in the world that guide you rather than hud and interface stuff uh like the fox and the birds and and the wind in ghost of tsushima uh i'm not that big on those i hope i hope there are just normal things as well for getting around the world but my big takeaway was visually this is ps5 only and it didn't feel like that big of a step up from the first game. Am I the only one that thought that? Yeah, I mean, it just I, the first game looks really good, though. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's hard to say, but I actually struggled to even remember what we had seen already and what it was new in this one. I think the wingsuit might have been new. That is new. That looks in cool. this one. Yeah, so that's sort of like a flying a flying through the city instead of swinging through the city. But I, I don't know. I watched a couple other people say, uh, I think it was just like, I don't know, some YouTube shorts or Instagram shorts or something that were popping up for me that, you know, they had played it 
there was like a big demo going around. It seemed like for a lot of uh, influencers and and oh, media really? people, and they were saying like it was a game changer. And like I don't know, I found the web swing swinging pretty fast to be honest, to get around the city and pretty fun to do. So, I mean, it could be fun also, but I don't think it, the web swing, swinging was like slow by any means. The, I, I really liked falling in the first game, uh, like the momentum and the speed mm-hmm. you could build up with that. And it just felt like it didn't actually lead. It meant lent to, or sorry, it lent itself to temporary speed, but it was gone pretty quick. So if this is a way mm-hmm. of taking that feeling of momentum and giving you forward locomotion as well. Uh, I think it'll be a success. And I, I would say it's there kind of the same way survivor added a lot of locomotion mechanics and then expanded their level design. This one is, I think they said doubled almost double the size of the first game, which right away is like, Oh no, it's bigger. I, I kind of like the size of the first one, but yeah. I assume <laughs> because you're going to be able to get places a lot faster uh, with the wingsuit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and what, one other thing I want, that, yeah. one other thing I want to mention. So I think this is like right at the very end of the show, like basically the show ended, and then they had some video afterwards that was related to Spider Man, and I think it was like showing off like suits that you could get with some sort of deluxe edition or something. And I was like, I was really into those suits. I was like, oh man, I like the look of these suits, even though generally like they're. You, they're not based as far as I know on anything from comics. They're just new creations, but they looked pretty cool to me. Uh, not that not I, I thought you were going to say these suits weren't based, uh, <laughs> but, <definitely> based. <laughs> but they also showed a system where you can have the suit and then tweak it within that, right? Like there's variants within each suit. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing with the original game, which I'm a little bit torn on like, because the idea of you could take any suit, but then apply the powers from the other suits to it at some point. And it was kind of like, I don't know. I like the idea of having the suit tied to the power a little better, I guess, but whatever. Yeah. I'm still pumped for this game. As far as the video game equivalent of uh Barbenheimer, it's, we need a name for super Mario wonder and Spider-Man on the same day. Uh, but I'm playing Mario wonder first. I'll tell you that right now. Ooh, I'll play Spider-Man out. first. And I love insomniac. I love all of their games. That's how excited I am for Mario wonder. Well, I'm probably going to be playing Starfield. I thought you were going to say like Cat Quest 2 or. <laughs> well, if, if, if that Cat Quest Pirates game comes out, you better watch out. All right. That could be on the top of the list. Uh, next, Tales of Arise getting an expansion quite some time after uh, the game launched. And just, I thought this game looked really good. I've never played a Tales game, but the effects, graphics, and combat looked pretty pretty awesome i should check one of these out have you guys played them at all or tales from arise or tales i've played of- some i've played a bunch of tales games never i don't think i've beaten any of them but tales of arise was really good from what i played i didn't get that far maybe a couple hours in and it was it was kind of one of those games that has been in my wish list for a long time i've taken it out of the library and had it sat on my shelf for the five weeks and then i return it and uh I just, it's a long game. It's like, it's kind of like Dragon Quest size of game, like just huge. So you do need to have a lot of time and be really devoted to it to, if you're going to try to beat it. Uh, but it's, it's fun. It's, I, I like it. It's, it's, um, you know, just a pretty good uh, action RPG type game. All right. My next announcement I don't have much about. It's something in the Hoyoverse. I don't even have the title listed. I failed you here. Honkai Star Rail, I believe. Yeah. Which also looks good. I'm not going to play it, but uh, they definitely have interesting art style, uh, art direction, and graphics, but I don't know if I'll ever go down the free-to-play route with some of these games. I assume this game is free-to-play? Yes, it Pretty is. Sure, yeah. All right. But we haven't got an update on, was it uh, Doke V or something like that? What was the game? Doke I was V. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not a Hoyo first game, though, is it? I, thought, I don't think it is. It 
looks similar in art style, but I probably get that wrong all the time. <laughs> okay, next in one of the strangest games which we've seen before, which feels like it should be a PlayStation game, a Sony first party game. This is a Square Enix game called Foam Stars, which is a blatant Splatoon ripoff using foam instead of ink. And this is like classic PS3 era. Whatever Nintendo or Xbox would do, Sony would come up with their version of it, whether it was trophies for achievements or uh, even Uncharted. PlayStation All-Stars. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) Those types of games. This feels like it's one of those, but it's not Sony. It's Square Enix. And I don't see any scenario where if I was going to play this game, I wouldn't just go buy Splatoon instead. Well, the one thing that would be good is if it was on PlayStation Plus. You know, it feels like one of those games that if you want the player base to be there, you should uh, put it out there on their subscription service. I had, before the subscription service, I have a note. This would have been, you get it for free on PlayStation Plus that month, guaranteed. Uh, so I don't think it's going to do too well. You know, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm, there's so many games that you just can tell there's no chance. Have we ever been surprised by a game? Can you think of a game where you're like, I can't believe how popular this game became where it was like, I was like, this, this is a piece of garbage. I I mean, like uh, we were just talking about the Hoyo verse, like, I mean, Genshin impact, not that I, even knew what it was before it came out, but that game is huge. Uh, So, you know, sometimes these free to play games seem to come out of nowhere and do build an audience, but it's not easy. Like PUBG is kind of surprising to me how popular it was at one point. Um, I don't know. To me, COD is still shocking to me how popular it is considering people don't even play the, storyline they just play multiplayer doesn't even really change that much i mean i I play madden like every year so i mean i can't complain but i mean i'm just kind of surprised that like shooting people sell so many copies uh year after year i mean i think madden is the perfect comparison there it's just people want to play with their friends and every year they just just buy the new one and that's it but Mm -hmm. yeah uh, we should think about this for a future. I, I'm going to pose it for junk mail in the future. What are the games you're surprised are so popular? Uh, I mean, the one that immediately pops out in my head is Vampire Survivors, to be honest. I know you love it, Vampire Survivors, but I'm shocked <laughs> that that game is so popular. I think that's a good answer. Uh, 100%. All right. Lastly, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth official release date. February 29th, a leap day. Maybe that's in the spirit of changing time and rebirth. Uh, strange dates could be very intentional. I don't know. Probably. Two discs, a uh, hundred hours plus of gameplay. So this game is probably going to be 180 gig install on your console or PC. Oh, or whatever. It's going to be <laughs> enormous. Um, I thought it looked amazing. The, uh, just what I'd expect. Uh, very colorful. Seeing a lot of variety now that you're out in the open world. Seeing some classic areas from the game. Uh, oh, yeah. W- Huck, you, this is your baby. What are you saying? Well, I, I just they they just dropped every little bit of fanboy fangirl little like you know piece of piece of little highlight. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, every like all the golden saucer stuff, the the flying chocobos, um, the the famous snake. That's like oh, yeah. when you first get out there. The that Junon looked- gun. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, you they're what they they kind of showed open worldy things. I don't know if it was open world. Hard to tell. Uh, Kate Sith or whatever that character's name is. That dune buggy thing you drive like. Vincent, I mean, they hit basically tons and tons of stuff. Um, there was even guys I didn't recognize that I probably should have, like that weird flamboyant dancer thing 
they had for that one scene, obviously probably golden saucer related. Um, yeah, it looked but, like they were bringing back an equivalent of the rhythm game from remake. Oh yeah. Where yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. The, the, the prompts would fly through the characters and all that stuff, which was actually right. pretty well done. It's a new version of that. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I thought it looked incredible. Uh, I'm very interested to see how, the story changes or doesn't change or whatever they're going to do. Um, yeah. And they also had like a bunch of um, summons, like I had Odin and uh, I can't remember the oh. other one was called Crusader or something like that. They also but, showed off like the Emerald, the weapons, right? The super weapons are one of them. Right. Yeah. One of them. I think the, not the water one, but uh, I don't know. One of them. Emerald or Sapphire, right? One of, like, is that is that what they are? Uh, yeah, yeah. Emerald and Emerald's the water Ruby. one, and Sapphire is the one at the end. I think this is like uh, the first weapon though that comes in the Junon gun attacks. Okay. So I don't know. It's it's looking really good. I'm not even like a uh, huge fan of the original. I loved the remake, and I can't wait to get back to it. Public service announcement, courtesy of Red Flag Deals Canada. Hot deals forums. <laughs> Currently on the PlayStation Store, de- definitely in Canada. I can't speak to other regions. You can buy or pre order Rebirth. There's two versions. Right now, the one that comes with the original, like remake, intergrade, is the same price as buying it on its own. So, and I like hmm. went in an incognito to see if it had anything to do with the fact that I owned it. It doesn't. So if you are even considering these games or uh, now, is that just integrate or the full Final Fantasy seven? Yeah, everything you get the whole, you get both. So games. it's like two games for free. Yeah. So if you've never bought Final Fantasy remake and you've been interested and in rebirth, as far as I can tell, if you go order, there's a version of Rebirth that has both. Make sure you're picking mm. one, and it's just the regular price of Rebirth. Damn, hmm. that's I awesome. Mean, remake was on. They might fix it. So R- remake was on PlayStation Plus at some yeah, point. For sure. So so maybe that's part of why. But uh, I, I still yeah, have to be integrated. I mean, I, I still haven't played Remake, uh, but this does look great and does make me want to go back and play it. One question for you guys. I read something online that you can't continue your save from remake or something like that. What? Yeah. Don't I, don't know. Know. I, did, I didn't really read it all, but I was like really confused. Cause I thought that was like kind of the whole point that like, this is one long game. Like, why would you, but maybe it's because... so linear. Like, I, I don't even think it'd be that. Big I, I, well, I think we talked about it after remake that, how do you even continue this? Because you already have like a bunch of your materia leveled up and then you're going to go into part two or rebirth, whatever it's called. Are you going to still be at level 40 or whatever the max level was plus all your upgraded materia? That doesn't seem like the choice they would make. And you had like a lot of the materia that existed in the whole game before already all leveled up. So it it seemed like they had to come up with some way to reset you, you know, pull the, the Metroid. Oh, sorry. We stole all your stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, cloud, you got hurt. Oh, you happen to drop all your materia. Now you have to rebuild it all kind of bullshit kind of stuff. I, I can't imagine them giving you like full reign of everything you had before. And, and I think that would penalize new players as well. So uh, if you wanted to, for some yeah, reason, I guess that's play the, just the second game and not the first game. It could also, they're clearly playing with time uh, with the story. Like it could be starting a different timeline or it could be part of their plan. They've been so clever with uh, some of the stuff in those games that I wouldn't be surprised, but it is not a big deal to me. The only thing that's really, we kind of alluded to that's left unanswered is how open is the open map. And I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like final fantasy 16, some open areas uh, with fast travel back to key locations. And I'm okay with that. That's kind of, I mean, if you think about it in like, I mean, once you get an airship or something, it's a little different, but 
really that's how it is in most rpgs anyways you kind of have this section that's blocked by rivers or streams or mountains or something like that so it really just depends on how much art they can cram into those areas but um i think going back to the save stuff for a second also final fantasy 7 remake was on ps4 so you kind of have to deal with like cross-gen cross-system stuff that might just be a giant pain in the ass um that is not worth dealing with i mean they could always do the mass effect equivalent where you do the motion comic and they give you like maybe some choices as to what your starting material or equipment is but uh i don't think that'll happen i think it'll just be you know we have a planned start for this game and it will play with or maybe into the story maybe you just play as zach the whole game and all of this is an illusion that you're playing as with cloud really you're playing as zach and he has nothing because he just joined the crew could happen could happen Mm -hmm. uh and last thing as i mentioned i thought the voice acting was not great and when i played the first game i don't remember that i was into it big time but for whatever reason watching these things today uh the day i watched them like this is something's off here might have been me maybe i'm off there's no jesse could be the actual I, answer. I didn't see jesse oh. featured at all you Man, stole my heart huge... no jesse <laughs> yeah you need jesse you gotta on. bring her back jesse's the new Aerith. i actually uh, after playing that game i like looked up who the voice actress was and, like wrote her down i was like you are a good voice actress like keep that name around for if, if i ever get loads of money and need a voice actress <laughs> all right uh, i think that's it am i missing anything i don't think so i'm to give a letter grade overall i thought this was pretty bad uh i i can't really think of anything other than rebirth which i already knew was coming i'm kind of like d minus i think i'm a d minus and i'm wondering if it should be an f I mean, this is a tough one because it really, there wasn't really anything new. Was there anything new? I'm trying to think. Baby uh, steps. But no, you said that wasn't new even. Yeah. I mean, maybe new to uh, Sony. I but... take it back. It's an F. F plus. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I, I don't know. I thought it was okay. I, I would say it's more like a C minus for me. You just said there's literally nothing new. And tell me what I know, but like, I can't, it, I don't judge it just by. What are you judging by? It's new games i'm looking forward to and trailers that i liked so there's good stuff here it's just nothing brand new this guy's getting sony payola <laughs> <laughs> it's official <laughs> maybe uh yeah I, I i did like the rebirth stuff i thought it was awesome but i i'm kind of with frank nothing else really interested me at all i mean the spider-man 2 stuff looked good but Nothing really excited me there too much. I'm just ready to play that game. I don't really need to see anything more. And so I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to give it a D. Okay. There you have it. A very, what was going to be an amazing day, September 14th turned out to be a bit of a dud, Uh, but at least it gave us something to talk about. Uh, I think maybe hold on what we played. Save it for next week, unless someone has something they really want to talk about. Not really. I, play, I did play a little bit of Gunbrella, aside from Starfield. I but, played uh, a very tiny amount of Gunbrella, a very tiny amount of Myth Force, a very tiny amount of Mortal Kombat 1 Early Access, which I'm already regretting paying for. <laughs> and I'm not even going to get to play Lies of P Early Access, which I paid for. So again, I'm an embarrassment to gaming um but you keep it uh, you're keeping the industry alive though that's right supporting <laughs> developers uh you can watch us at youtube.com forward slash game junk thanks for people who commented i'll be doing the draw uh after the show and i'll let you know if you won so keep an eye out i don't know the best way to do that i'm sure i'll uh keep an eye on your comments should i draw it right now sure i mean right. I, I, live I, drawing i just pulled it 
I oh. pulled it out of the Mario hat. All the names he's, that come up. Oh, you're like you're prepped, man. You're ready to go. Yeah, he was ready to go. It's official. How could we not? How could you not think about doing this on the show? This is <laughs> this is prime. I'm ready. Mario hat full of names, thousands of names in this drawing. <laughs> Zapata thirty six. You you won. I'll be Congrats. getting in contact with you. Nice. You get in contact with me for your free Steam code for high on life. All right, youtube.com forward slash game junk. Discord links are there. Uh, you can find Sean Film Junk on Twitter or X. Uh, Andrew is my angry commute and equilibrium sis. Thank you for watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>